We're here at the 2015 North American International Auto Show in Detroit, next on Talking Cars. Hi everybody, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Jake Fisher. I'm Gabe Shenar. You know, the thing about the Detroit Auto Show this year, it felt like going to a tapas place. You know, there were a lot of little plates. You know, they were all very tasty, but no full meals. Have you had lunch I yet? Like Are tapas. you hungry? I'm, I'm hungry, but I, I do. <laughs> I want to start with dessert first, and that's the Ford GT and the Acura NSX. Ford GT stole the show. Okay, over. This is done. We're this done. thing I'm, was I'm, yeah. amazing. And they started off right in the beginning, and this thing was amazing. And here's what really blew my mind about the GT. Okay, fine. Lots of horsepower, mid-engine. Okay, we got it. But here's the thing. Everyone's showing old cars. Okay? Alfa Romeo's got like these cars from the 30s yeah, and the 60s, right. and, and everybody's doing that. And you know what? Generally, when you do that, you're like, here's our new one. And you just squint really hard. You can see like a body line that matches it. Here is a situation, in my estimation, that they outdid the original. This new Ford GT looks better than the original because they're doing stuff with materials they couldn't do in the 60s. Mm. With carbon fiber and buttresses and all these crazy things, it blew me away. So all, what you're saying is all we need is another VW bus. In That's the retro exactly, theme, right? No. <laughs> no, it's exactly. As long as it's got 600 horsepower, I'm good. <laughs> but, but yeah, but, VW bus would be... Yes. On a segue. Oh, you're, good. you're absolutely right. I mean, the <clears> show <throat> is about all kinds of little niche products, uh, <clears throat> you know, exotic cars like the Ford GT, the Acura NSX, I mean, high performance uh, CTSV and GSF. But where's the meat and potatoes here? You're right. I Who wanna... wants meat and potatoes? <laughs> well, no, I mean, you have things like the Acura NSX, uh, which, you know, they're finally going to build after the longest gestation period. There were Super Bowl commercials for this thing, what, two years ago? That's right. Yeah, I think they wanted to beat <clears throat> the Pontiac Solstice for the longest gestation period. But, I mean, did the Ford GT steal the NSX's thunder? Uh, yes! Oh, absolutely. N NS what? <laughs> I mean, it came out right before it, and, like, the NSX looks kind of pedestrian compared to that GT. Okay, we got, we got to like that. But, I mean, but for the meat and potatoes argument, you're totally right. I mean, where's the mid-sized sedan? Where's the small, where's SUV? small SUV? Where are vehicles that people actually buy in numbers? Exactly. But here's the thing, I don't care. Because you know what? We've had our meat and potatoes. We've had that for enough. You know what this means? This means the auto industry is back and they could go and build the stuff that people dream about and not just the things that people have it's, to buy. It's party time. But, it is. But, 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 yes. no, but, but some people are trying to be <clears throat> responsible. Someone has to be responsible. Oh, GM, GM came out with two cars with almost the same name. <clears throat> uh, the Chevy Bolt and the Chevy Volt. The and next one's going to be the Jolt. You and can go to Dolt. I mean, <laughs> this, this, this game has played on forever on social media. Um, the Bolt is the more <clears throat> interesting idea. Uh, 200 miles of electric range for around 30000 bucks. Okay, so first of all, yes, electric. And by the way, we just filled up for $1.75 a gallon. Unfortunate time. Yeah, it's not but, the best time. Okay, everyone's got a title out there. The Tesla killer. Tesla killer. Are, are, are we kidding here? Tesla killer? It's more like a, a leaf it's killer, a leaf. right? Leaf. It's I a mean, leaf competitor. We don't even know if it's I mean, a killer or a leaf. Right. Well, I mean, 200 well, miles leaf, is really, really yeah, impressive. Leaf will get but, bigger batteries eventually. Yeah. So. But, but I mean, here's the thing. It's like, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a neat car. But I mean, stop saying Tesla killer because you know what? It's that's not the reason people buy Teslas. Teslas are exciting and they're fast and they look cool and they do all these things. Right. This is a car that's a responsible vehicle that could do, go 200 miles. Maybe it will make a dent in electric car sales, which nobody's buying electric cars. Kind of a dirty no. little secret. No. Well, yeah. cheap gas is going to be. But, but I mean, back when gas was 4.50 a gallon, people weren't buying electric cars. Right. So. I mean, but you still have um, carbon, you know, carbon uh, footprint reduction efforts. You still have reasons. You know, there are still things in place, no matter what the temporary uh, drop in gas prices right. is, there's still reasons for these cars to, to exist, to but exist. not for people to buy them. That's the difference. you got to make a car that people want. And do, do you think people will, is this your theory, people won't really want, I mean, the Bolt's this little square box. They call it a crossover. It's a freaking hatchback. Right. But I mean, Tesla... Teslas are cool. People buy Teslas because cool, they want sexy. Tesla. Yes. They're not buying them because, oh, they think they're going to you know, save money in the long run or an equation that makes any oh. sense anywhere. It's but, a whole different uh, proposition there. But you know, it's also weird in the same way, Chevy seemed to suck some of the core, at least the distinctiveness out of the Volt. 
Yeah. I mean, it looks like an Acura. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, there's a C pillar looks like a Volvo a little bit. I mean, the, apparently that's what customers wanted, make it more normal. You can barely tell it's a hatchback. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some solid improvements. Now you're up to 50 miles of range instead of 35. Uh, it's incremental, and I don't think that's what they really needed. I mean, you still, uh, did you get in the back seat? I mean, it's got a third seat belt in the back, so it's a five-seater, but you can't actually put real human legs back there. It's still got a really bad bad headroom. It doesn't have the functionality of a, uh, of a Prius, right. or a Prius did in 2004, for that matter. At least the uh, center console is way better now. Oh, yeah, it actually yeah. has buttons and knobs now. Yeah. Speaking of practicality, trucks. We saw a lot of trucks at this show. We saw the new um, new Toyota Tacoma. Yeah, so yeah, two Japanese pickup trucks uh, starring in Detroit. It's the Tacoma, which gets uh, a smaller new V6. Uh, the 3.5 replaces the 4.0. And uh, the Nissan Titan, which is, uh, I mean, it almost looks like a caricature of a, <laughs> of a Tonka truck. Yeah, let, let's <laughs> talk about the Tacoma first, because there's more to talk about with the Titan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's an update. They made the frame a bit stiffer. Hopefully it drives better. Well, they, they had to. I mean, it used to be the only game in town in compact pickup trucks. Uh, I mean, it has a huge following. It's, it's such a popular workhorse. But, you know, there's Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon right behind it. Uh, so it's, it was time to do something with a Tacoma. I think it's smart, though, because they didn't spend a lot of money on it. You know, well, so you, you keep the profit engine going. Let, let me throw out a number. It was kind of a, not a big announcement, but um, 29, okay? The Eco Diesel from Dodge Ram. Now they've got 29 miles per gallon they're touting about this vehicle. The issue is, is that people tend to buy, people want to buy what they want, not necessarily what they need. So you could argue, it's like, oh, this small size compact pickup truck, that's gonna do the hauling I want. But if the difference in terms of fuel economy, the difference in terms of price isn't that much bigger, I think people are gonna be happier with full-size Dodge Ram or Silverado or what, whatnot. Maybe, um, but not all diesels are for fuel economy, and that's where the Titan comes in. You know, with, with a Cummins V8 that's making 550, 555 uh, foot, feet, foot All the torque, torque in the world. <laughs> all your torques belong to us. Yeah, you know, it, they're going for this funny niche of between light-duty half-ton trucks and heavy-duty trucks. I, I, th I think actually they're really right about that. I mean, we, we actually went, we yeah. did the, our diesel heavy duties because, yeah, you know, the, what the domestics have done generally, if they, is, I want a diesel, right. and they've almost forced you to get exactly. way more truck than you need. Sure, I yeah. mean, you're kind of happy with the light duty A lot of people want the diesel, but they're forced into a heavy duty pickup truck, even though they don't need the heavy duty pickup truck, and they don't need the harsh ride, and they don't need right. the, the, the bouncy and the, and the uh, unrefinement of such a workhorse. Yeah. Well, you just have to wonder, is it going to have the bouncy? You know, I mean, it does have a distinct, you know, the Titan XD has a distinct frame from what will be the normal type. You gotta wonder, how's this thing gonna drive? How's it gonna ride? Is well, it going to we'll be better? Well, and the other thing is that, I mean, they make a big deal. It's like, we're the first, you know, V8 diesel. You know, when you get so many adjectives in there, you know, you start like phasing out. The thing is, is that Dodge Ram, they've got a V6 diesel. It's got plenty of power. It could do a lot it, of stuff. It's not and towing 12,000 pounds. Well, and how many people need to tow the 12,000 pounds? Again, it's part of the market. You got a lot of people who are buying the light duty trucks who, probably already have more capability than they really need. And if you could get that six cylinder diesel and still tow, what, 8,000 pounds or whatever yeah, right. it is, probably pretty good, even if it doesn't have two more cylinders. Uh, before we leave it, the Titan, boy, it looks like a Chinese knockoff of an old F-150. <laughs> Just not a, not yeah, a. Yeah, there's something, uh, the proportions are a little odd there and the whole thing looks comically huge. Painting it yellow doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, speaking about pickup trucks with too much capability. Hyundai says, you know, people want cheap trucks. People want small trucks. People want trucks that can't really do anything. Based on what? Hyundai, <laughs> Hyundai research. Hyundai research. They they're, talked they're, to a couple hipsters in Brooklyn well, and out came the Santa Cruz. The, 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 the people in, in Santa Cruz. yeah, the people in this country, I don't think really believe that. And they've tried. I mean, how many concepts have we seen? Every three years, someone else brings out this. There's, a, there's like Dodge, a, Ram a sign at say with a, with a pickup truck GMC bed. GMC did and this a, a couple years ago. And we saw vehicles like the Baja and, and the Ridgeline. Which the Honda actually, Ridgeline, yeah. Nobody, I mean, how many people bought the Honda Ridgeline? It was a terrific truck for it was a, great, a lot of people. Uh, it was people. a great truck It was the right thing. thing for a lot of people. <laughs> it, it was the right thing, but it's not what 
people. It's not yeah. something that people I mean, No, buy. but look, people are going to buy trucks, you know, they're going to buy these bro dozer trucks. And we saw some more of those there. We saw the Ford Raptor. So we had Ford Raptor and then also Dodge the Ram got Rebel. There. The Ram Rebel. Yeah, which, which you can speaking get with a six cylinder. Who's going to get Speaking of comical trucks. You can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's where it's at. You know, I mean, that thing with the 33 inch tires and, oh, and the seats where you actually had the actual tread pattern on the seats of the Toyo tires oh, or on the seats. On. That's hot right there. People need that. That's true. I think it's I got to need it's that. Not, that's pretty it's, cool. It's, it's not a one. It's well, a that's like people <laughs> buying a Jeep Trailhawk uh, for all those styling details. Yes, yeah. it's all about that's the, where it's at. the image. I'm just amazed how much uh, engineering work went into the Raptor. It's six inches wider. It's on a different frame, you know, because it's aluminum, they can do the EcoBoost V6 now. You know, there, there's there's a lot of work that went into that, but I'm sure there's a lot of profit that come back out of that. Uh, more cars that are alluring to people. Buick, going in a completely different direction. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, really, I mean, apparently it's, uh, in China, it's the year of the Buick. Yeah, it's a good year for Buick so, at the, at the yeah. Detroit show, too. Uh, I mean, we saw the Cascada, which is an appealing car. Yeah, it's an Opel Astra, basically, uh, convertible. And good timing, because uh, the Volkswagen EOS is going away pretty soon. So oh, what all are, eight people who bought that. <laughs> no, but, but, but beyond that, I mean, there aren't many vehicles in that segment. I want to carry four people. I don't want a super expensive car. I don't want a sports car. I'm not going to buy an Audi well, I mean, A5. I'm not going to buy a BMW 3 Series. Sebring? Sebring? You know, yeah, it's oh, price of 200 dead. History. 200 dead. So and now, you, so you, now you have, you, don't you want fill a gap. Down. You fill a gap that has kind of gone away. Yep. So there's a gap there. I mean, plenty of people in Florida buy Buicks. And if I was in Florida, I wouldn't mind a drop top. So, yep. hey, it works out good. Uh, Everybody wins. Perhaps more appealing, though, is the Buick Avenue. Oh, yeah. I think that. For me, that's the star of the show, actually. I mean, I know it. You don't know this about me, but I have a soft spot for Buick because it was the, the car I got my I license on. I, I started my, at least my legal driving career on a Buick. So I think that Avenir is really a I very think, appealing kind of I think you Buick. like it because it looks like a Panamera. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. They, um, they both have all the nose in the world. They have a lot of nose. No, um, no Gabe, Gabe's right. That was, props goes out for Buick for, for two things. One, showing that concept, but also kind of keeping it under wraps. I mean, sure. we're, there's very yeah, few surprises in these cameras, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. usually it's like, oh yeah, I saw that already on you know the blogs a week ago. That was like, holy crap! And I think we're going to see, you know, we're going to see certainly styling cues from that going forward, sure. if not that vehicle. And you know what? They need to make that. They vehicle. need to make that vehicle because I mean, props to them. It's a Buick. That is what a Buick should be. Right. You know, something not people a, want, something not different. Not a oval I, with different headlights and a gear. Yeah, if I were in charge there, I'd take the chassis of the Chevy SS. And that, that would be the, the basis for that Buick. Yeah, and that, that would be a heck of a car. Speaking Rear more American. drive, all wheel drive. Yeah, sure. Speaking more American Done. luxury, we saw the new Lincoln MKX. Right. And moving on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's an expected, you know, it's yeah, an expected it's, update. Uh, yeah, and then pretty soon we're going to see the Ford Edge, which is a twin vehicle. And that's really, really an important thing for Ford because they've been completely not competitive in that uh, space. Yeah, well, you can argue the MKC still isn't. But yeah, you know, it, it you know, more power, more EcoBoost power, easier controls, a nicer interior. Yeah. You know, product upgrades that they the need. The fact that it shares an engine with a GT makes it more interesting already. So, <laughs> well, that, that's the genius thing about the Ford GT yeah. is that it's got, you know, the it, EcoBoost. It markets EcoBoost. It markets really well. EcoBoost. You know, it's like. My truck has the same engine as this supercar. There you go. My crossover has the same. Yeah. Everything, all EcoBoost all the time. Uh, talking about some news and more vehicles with EcoBoost. Uh, Gabe, our predictions for North American Car of the Year were half right. Yes, half right, and uh, actually uh, in a good way. I'm, uh, I'm glad that I was uh, half wrong on my prediction because write that down. Uh, there's a lot of things to write down. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're learning a lot about Gabe. Yeah, so yeah, the Mustang didn't get Car of the Year. The VW Golf did. Should uh, the Golf have gotten Car of the Year? They sell. Well, I mean, it's well, yeah. You're right. I mean, they sell like you know, I don't know, maybe a like 20, 30,000. Yeah, a lot worldwide, <laughs> it's, but it's not, not worldwide not North America. Car of the year. You're exactly right. But, uh, I mean, on the merit of the car, sure. I mean, here's a car that uh, it, it rides more comfortably than a Toyota Camry. It's quieter. It handles better than a Mustang. You, inside, you feel like you're in an Audi. So uh, they got the yeah, powertrains right. They totally, got rear seat now. You're I mean, almost it, paying for an Audi. So totally deserved. 
Yeah. It's just a weird. Well, it's and when it's combined with the GTI, it's it, it's it a makes neat. a stronger case. Yeah, and, and, and that cracks me up too because like the GTI is not a golf GTI. They make such a big deal about it. oh it's a different car now. Only in the US market. But but now well in the US market, <laughs> but now that it's the North America of the year, oh no, it's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm fact, the Passat the Passat golf is too. I'm that, surprised that's part of the year too. Uh, golf sport wagon isn't in there. You know, just throw, throw Oh it is throw already. It. Retroactive. And the electric one too. <laughs> yeah, the whole family. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the Golf Tiguan, too. Uh, more diesels. Uh, Land Rover and Jaguar, they're going to put diesels in almost everything. Yes. Um, more diesel choices. Uh, I mean, we've seen, actually, uh, among our subscribers, that uh, there, there's a pretty large take rate on Audi Q5s, diesels, Audi GLKs. 7 GLK. Yeah. Volkswagens, so, gangbusters, and diesels. Yeah, um, we love diesels. Yeah. Come on. It's, it, it's true. I mean, they're, they're great. And, and what they're what's, they're really good at is they they do really good in fuel economy and not necessarily the EPA cycle, but the way we tend to drive as Americans. You you hop on the highway and cruise along at 70. Right. That diesel just does so well in terms of fuel economy in those situations, which people who drive a lot tend to be in those situations. And if you drive long distances, the range six, seven, eight hundred miles on a tank. Right. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. You could make it to the next yeah. diesel station. It also makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it also makes sense for them. It, you know, Land Rover and Jaguar have to deal on their Europeanness. You know, that that's right. what makes that's the appeal of the cars. These just make them more European. Yeah. So um, it was just a matter of, uh, of of money to get it federalized, and now they, there's so much money from uh, Tata, the Indian company that owns them, to do that, and there's no barrier anymore. Ooh, there's Spe there's a trend right there. Well, there it is. Speaking of money, that's coming from a country other than you expect. Money from Asia. It's helping money, out luxury money, cars. That's right. China. Yeah. And Volvo. Yeah. And we saw what will be the first Chinese-built car. Yeah. And it's going to be a Volvo. Yeah, An the S60, S60 inscription, yes. which has a three point something inch added to its wheelbase, and actually that that. It really works. It I mean, looks it good, and the back seat is good. comfortable, and it's it's nice. Yeah. And I think it uh, kind of uh, makes the Volvo S80 a bit uh, frivolous at this yeah, point. Yeah, why bother? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'd also just I just buy an XC90. You know, it's the first time I got to sit in one. What a stunning car! The it interior is. is gorgeous. I absolutely agree. You know, and it, and a lot of people are worried about oh Chinese ownership or Indian ownership, whatever. And in, in the end, I think this may be much better than what we've seen before. I mean, like like you know, when GM took over Saab, right? And and what happens there? It's they like strangled oh, it. They strangled it. They're like, oh well, just put a Saab badge on this Malibu or whatever. You know, here we've got <laughs> basically you guys work it out. We'll fund. We'll fund it, yeah. and we'll let you make the decision. You develop, you make the decisions. You develop it. You develop. And this is what we're seeing. Right. And we're seeing this with Land Rover. We're seeing this with, with, with uh, Volvo. And it's like really exciting because, I mean, it could have gone the other way. These companies could have been bankrupt and gone, and gone as choices. Sure. So, uh, Another choice coming to the American market is Alfa Romeo. Eight new models by 2018. There'll be a crossover in so there So we're going to have the... Uh, Right. So it the, will be yeah. the, the Dodge seat. Charger, uh, Alfa Romeo. That's right. The, the Ram, the Ram. Ego, Diesel, Diesel. So, yeah. First of all, as much as I love Alfa, it'll be the 12C. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to waste half an hour of a press conference on the Spider version of uh, the 4C was a little, uh, yeah. a little. Uh, Our time too much. comes cheap. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but yeah, the next, uh, there's a, next one's going to be a sedan, sports sedan, uh, to compete with the BMW 3 Series, and that's uh, I think pretty imminent. Yeah. Uh, you know, you were saying earlier, Ford comes out with tweaked version. You know, there's some performance geeks at Ford. You know, I got to hand it to them that way. I mean, like the, the Mustang uh, GT350R, carbon fiber carbon wheels. Carbon fiber wheels. Production yeah. carbon fiber wheels. I mean, that's pretty cool for a bike. <laughs> it <laughs> is, absolutely. Imagine a car that a goes car almost 200 miles wheels. an hour. Don't no, curb them. No, no, no. Curb fuelers are standard equipment. <laughs> that's right. And the reduction in unsprung weight. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, we also saw the Infiniti Q60. Yes, great yes. paint job. <laughs> so yeah, it's trying a to coupe. be positive here. And um, <laughs> at least I got the name of it right. I won't get the name of new Mercedes SUVs right. <laughs> Back to the Q60. So yeah, it's a it's a coupe, and uh, I think it's some time away. It's a coupe concept uh, Q60. There's probably going to be a convertible at some point. 
but it's like, it, it doesn't seem to bring anything new to the party over a G35 troop or G37 troop. I mean, we were there. Or a 4 Series, or a... Uh, oh, right. Yeah. I mean, this is or the scary... Or an uh, A5. But I mean, you look at the competitors, but I mean, even just look at, you know, their history. You know, I mean, what does the Q50 bring that the, you know, the Infinity G37 didn't have? Well, it brings horrible reliability well, it does and that. a and touch screen system, system that, that doesn't work. Yeah. Like, so. but, but yeah, so... It's going away, by the way. <laughs> but, but, but this is the issue. It's like, what, what new to the party? And, and you kind of expect it. I mean, a show like this is, you know, there's new and interesting things. And you, you can't just be kind of like what we have before. Um, there's got to be something new and exciting. And we're I mean, you you can even ask, uh, I hate to say it, but you can ask, what does the Infinity brand bring to the party? Sure, it's a weird auto show where Buick is more relevant than Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to wrap it up on that Twilight Zone-like reference. As always, thanks for listening.